Hey, how y'all doing? It's Josh from Cupid Techie, and today I wanted to do a quick video and walk you step by step on the installation of Ubuntu Server 18.4. So let's get it. So similar to my other videos I've done on installations, I have done all my installations in VirtualBox, so it'll be the same today. Um, it's easier to record uh, using a virtual machine uh, on my desktop so I can record every step and show you guys how to do it. So uh, first I want to start off by naming it. So you bun serve or something. Uh, and then let's name it 18 that way I can keep it separated and then when you start typing Ubuntu a lot of times in a virtual box it'll automatically select the operating system that you're installing and as well as the type which is Linux so in 64 bit so and next I'm gonna give this thing about two gigs um, and then we're gonna create a virtual hard disk create uh, and we could do a VDI and that's basically the file type that is creating the hard disk and it's, it's basically in, in when using virtual box it creates a, a file that contains everything the operating system itself as a whole so um, it's just the file type and I want it dynamically allocated and dynamically allocated means that the 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 file that it creates it grows as you uh you add data to it and once it grows it doesn't go back down it doesn't shrink um that's basically what it means is it only takes up the amount of space on your physical hard drive or physical hardware um as the size of whatever is in this container basically so dynamically allocated in a fixed space it'll automatically allocate that space on your hard disk um, for that size so if it's 10 gigs it'll make a 10 gig file um, so that's the difference if you didn't know and next um, and this is just naming the, the file and also the location you specify a specific location I have all mine stored in one location the default location uh, and this is the name of the actual uh, hard disk file. So I'm gonna make it 10 gigs. Uh, let's bump it up to 20. We create. Bam. And so once you go through those steps, the next thing is to go into the settings of it. It creates it, lists it here, and then you just go to settings. Go to. You don't have to really mess with any of the any of this. I explained a lot of this in one of my older videos. I think I did a video on Ubuntu Server 16 where I did an installation, but I explained a lot of this. This is mainly sharing clipboards, drag and drop, which we don't need for a server because it's all going to be terminal um, based operating system. So you you won't have files and folders. Uh, like you would think of in Windows or something so uh, we don't have to mess with any of that but one thing I want to mess with well I don't really need to mess with that anyway uh, I'm going to give it one core uh, my my processor has four cores uh, it's an i7 and uh, it's got the you know multi-thread and all that stuff so uh, I only need uh, one CPU really for it uh, because like I said, it doesn't have a desktop environment. And um, so it doesn't need that much processing power. Um, so let's bump up the display. I like to bump it up just the video memory just so it can uh, show the colors and all that stuff when I'm uh, displaying the, um, this when I'm doing the installation during doing the video capture. Um, so I always try to bump that up and then the storage this is where you go in and set the ISO now I already have downloaded the ISO from Ubuntu's website um, and as you see it's the first one on my list but you normally would go choose virtual uh, ISO click on it uh, go find the ISO wherever you have it I have it all stored in a folder called operating systems or I should name it ISOs whatever but um, I already have it downloaded and I put it in this folder for the purpose of this video. So 
good to go i have it selected and as you can see it when you create a virtual machine it automatically creates a controller id controller for a cd kind of cd drive and you can always create another one by clicking the plus it'll create another one you can add another iso if you needed to or you can add another drive to this uh virtual machine as well you can create a whole nother like sata drive um just just if you need to um we don't need it for this purpose so uh, and then this is the audio settings you can set up the audio it's going to use my audio now one thing i want to do is set up a bridge adapter and i want to use my network uh, connection and basically what bridge adapter is it's uh it's going to create a, a virtual adapter on the actual um virtual machine it'll it'll basically but it's still using the the uh the physical adapter but it creates a kind of a bridge and so what that means is it will get its own ip addresses though it's a real adapter when actuality is not it's a virtual adapter but um what we're doing right here is telling the system that we want it to have a virtual adapter or a kind of a real adapter because when you have it on that that it basically um, uses the same connection and it kind of creates its own networking uh, within the virtual machine and software so uh, we're gonna do bridge and that's the, the only reason I want it is because for future videos well a future the next video I'm gonna I'm gonna do it's um, where I will show you how to set up a static IP address so and then serial ports, we don't need that. USB ports, you can have it, have it to where you connect USBs from your uh, main machine over to the virtual machine. Uh, share folders, you can set up share folders and the interface, which is basically when you start up the machine, you can specify how you want, if you want everything to show up on the, on the interface or not. Um, that's, that's just personal preference there. Um, so we can press OK on this. Now we're done. We're ready to start the, uh, the operating system. So it's just like when you stick a, a live USB or a live CD uh, into a physical machine, it will pop up with that with that ISO uh, and start the installation process. So. Okay, so basically this is the installation, the installer. Uh, like I said, it'll boot right into the installer. Um, so uh, first thing you want to set select is the language. That's what's going to pop up first. Um, and if you're in a different country or whatever, you select that ain't that language. Otherwise, just select English. Uh, press enter. Now this is where you can set up your uh, keyboard. Uh, you can go through and, uh, and hit identif identify keyboard and it'll uh, try to identify your keyboard. Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it doesn't, but you can also go in here and manually set your keyboard settings. So, so we can go past that. So now um, there are different types of installers. I don't really know much about this cloud. Uh, stuff but I'm pretty sure you can set up cloud clusters all that type of stuff using these installers I don't know much about them so I'm not gonna play like I do but we're all we need today is uh, installing the basic Ubuntu 18.4 so if we click that um, we can go through to the next step and this is right here is the network connection or network configuration uh, and basically what we want to tell it is to set it as DHCP um, now I, I believe you can go in here and change it to where it sets a static and it'll do it during uh, the installation process but I would prefer to do it later in a video uh, so you guys can see the, 
the way to do it uh, after the installation. So right now it's set to we'll use the ACP. So basically the router will give it an IP address. So next. So this is if you have any proxy servers or anything you want to connect through to get to the internet or if you need it, uh, you put that information in here. It's basically an IP address to whatever server uh, that handles proxy for your network. So we'll need that. Now this is where you get into the partitioning. Um, you can do a, a guided partitioning or manual. And the guided partitioning it's basically going to uh, set it up for you. It's going to go through and set up the uh, entire disk. It's going to put the root, the home, and all that stuff in the, in one partition. Now, if you want to set it up in different partitions, um, then you can go into manually and you can set up each partition uh, the way you like. I know some people like to put their they home directory on a different partition to separate it from the operating system. Um, but... Uh, for this purpose, this video, we, we're just going to use the entire disk. So press enter. All right. Now this is going to uh, allow you to select your uh, your disk that you want the installation to happen on. So um, like I said, if you set up multiple partitions, you can specify here what partition you want it to install. Since we're using a whole drive, it's, on a, it's only gonna show one partition or disk um, for this purpose. So we can just hit enter on this and it'll select that, that disk. Press enter on it. And this is just a summary of what we set up. What it's going to set up, it's gonna set up a mount point for root. Uh, it's gonna use the whole, like I said, the entire partition, ext4. Um, as the local disk so we can hit done on that and it'll yeah if you if this is a confirmation right here so you just hit continue on it you just want to make sure you want to do it because it's going to wipe everything on your hard drive so you press continue on there and press and it will start the installation and one thing I found different about here uh, they have it where you can set up an SSH identity. I haven't used that before. I don't know much about it, but um, I'm just going to set it up the way I normally do. And let's see, this server I want to set it up as Ghost. That's the name. And then you want to put your user account or username there. Uh, and then your passwords. And just a highlight, I want to point this out. Um, you want to. Uh, when you do an installation or a base installation, the root account is always disabled by default. So that's why it forces you to create a user account. Um, but the root account is there. Uh, you can go through and activate it if you want to. There's a lot of guys out there on how to do it. And one cool thing about this, um, which I've seen is them, them doing this in a lot of installations, but uh, before the installation wouldn't start until after this step, but now, it starts while you're creating that account because it kind of does this at the, as like one of the last steps as far as creating the account, setting the permissions and all that good stuff for the uh, installation. And if I was to sit here, it would, I think it would stop uh, when you get to that point. But anyway, we're done uh, with this. And like I said, there is some new way of doing it. You can import SSH keys. Um, for the in for the installation um, and I'm pretty sure it installs SSH by default um, and that was one other thing I wanted to point out uh, I can hit done on this now but one other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, in previous installations of Ubuntu um, it would allow you to uh, select certain services you want in it, want installed like LAMP which is basically um, Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP, or um, your SSH server, you can choose to install that, but it looks like it installs that by default. By default, you can select that you want this server to install services to handle DNS or DHCP. Well, nowadays, nowadays it looks like they've taken that out, and I guess you have to go in and manually install it if it doesn't install it uh, during the installation. 
Uh, it looks like SSH is installed though, so we don't have to worry about that. But uh, if you want those other services, it's no selection for you to uh, install those services during the installation. So with that said, I'm gonna let the installation go and I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so we are back. Um, the installation has finished and we can reboot the system. So let's just click enter or hit enter and we're good to go. And what it's gonna do at the end of the, the reboot, um, it's going to ask you to remove the media with uh, VirtualBox. It'll automatically disconnect the uh, ISO from it so it can uh, boot from the uh, physical disk, so to speak. Uh, let's press enter on that. Okay, so we got a Ubuntu 18.4 installation done. So we can log in now. Um, it's Josh, username, password, press enter. And there we go. And now you can go through and do updates. That's the first thing you wanna do when you uh, finish the installation. You wanna go through and do a sudo app update, press enter on that. It's gonna ask you for your password and what it's doing is refreshing the list of uh, packages that are out there um, on all the Ubuntu servers. It'll go through and check to make sure uh, everything is updated. And if it's not, it lets you know what packages can be updated. And it'll tell you. See, it says 140 packages can be upgraded. After you refresh the packages, you wanna go down and, uh, and upgrade. And that will upgrade all those packages for you. So I'm gonna sit here and wait for these updates to happen just so you can, you know, see the process. So that's it for the install. Uh, now we have an updated version of Ubuntu Server 18.4. Uh, you can start installing programs and configuring from there. So if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and of course, keep it techie.